Hi guys, as I promised in my last video, I'm going to finish off this treadmill motor. Some people ask, most people ask for uh, just burning it up, uh, stalled, connected to power. Some people ask to overload it slowly for a while. Uh, one person asked me to mount it on a compressor and kill it slowly over 10 or 15 years. And one person liked my original idea of uh, cutting a slot in the flywheel. So I think I'll try to do as many of those things as possible. I'll start out with the slot in the flywheel, and if it somehow manages to still run after that, I'll overload it until it burns up, and then after that, finally uh, just run it stalled until it's completely uh, toast. This should do well enough for mounting the motor. Just drive a screw through there and screw this in. Yeah. Let's get that done, then we can get this thing set up. I was just testing out this motor, and I set up a rectifier to run it on DC to see if there's any if that gives any better performance than running an AC, and surprisingly it does. It gives a huge uh, uh, boost in torque. This motor is rated uh, DC, 120 volts, 6.2 amps, 1 horsepower. I was going to show you a baseline. This is a startup on 120 volts AC. And it starts up relatively slowly. Now I'll connect it up through the rectifier and run it at 120 volts DC, and you'll see just how much more powerful it is. The rectifier is connected up now. Here's the startup on 120 volts DC. That was way, way faster. So there's a significant performance difference there. You may be asking, why is the performance of the motor so much better on DC than it is on AC? And the basic answer to that is because of the inductance of the field winding. If you look at the equivalent circuit of the motor, it's got an armature, the piece in the center, uh, you can see in here, in series with the uh, field winding, which is the two coils on the outside. And because there's a piece of iron around it, that gives it a, a high uh, inductance. And inductance has the property of wanting to resist uh, the change in, a change in current. I've taken some measurements in this motor, and the DC resistance is 2 ohms, and the inductance is 18 millihenries. And at a certain frequency, an inductance has an equivalent reactance, so essentially it's almost a resistance value. So let's calculate the uh, reactance of the uh, 18 millihenry inductance. Here's the formula for calculating inductive reactance. The uh, reactance in ohms is equal to 2 pi times the frequency, 60 hertz in this case, times the inductance, 18 millihenries. And if you calculate that through, you get a reactance of 6.8 ohms, which is much greater, in fact, than the DC resistance. And if we combine the two to get the total impedance, they add at right angles, so we compute that and get 7.1 ohms uh, reactance to 60 hertz AC. So if you connect the motor to uh, 120 volts DC, you will get about three and a half times as much current through it as if you connected it to uh, 120 volts 60 hertz AC. So there's a significant performance gain from running the motor on DC, as we saw earlier when it spun, it spun up much faster on DC. Uh, now let's take a look at the actual current flowing through it. We've got the uh, mains lead going through the current probe. We are at 20 amps per division. So let's start this running and plug it in and see the current waveform. are around uh, 25 amps or so. It's not the distorted waveform. I think the uh, greater peaks in the middle are due to the uh, inductance saturating and reducing in uh, impedance. And DC this time. And that was definitely a lot more current. Be 
you can see the uh, current is far off the ground this time. And the, uh, what do we have here? About 50 amps average when it's running. Uh, it decreases as the uh, motor runs. The reason the current waveform is somewhat wavy is because the uh, DC coming out of the rectifier is not pure DC, it's uh, pulse DC, which has a peak value of 170, 100, about 170 volts, and a DC value that is, I believe, a little bit below 120 volts, or it might be a little bit above, I don't remember. But around this DC level, it sometimes voltage sometimes goes above, which causes the uh, higher uh, current section and the voltage sometimes goes below which causes the lower current uh, section. And if we added a capacitor to the output of the rectifier to get more pure DC this waveform would be a lot uh, smoother. And the DC uh, current level we measure here is pretty close to what we predict based on 2 ohms. 120 volts over 2 ohms equals about 60 amps. We're getting about 50 here probably due to the voltage dropped uh, due to all the wiring. And before that we had the uh, uh, impedance of about 7 ohms at 120 volts. That'll result in something a little bit less than 20 amps, maybe 18 or so. But due to the saturation, uh, the current goes higher somewhat. So, just because your DC motor will run on AC doesn't mean it will be uh, producing its maximum power. So if your motor says DC, it's best to uh, actually run it on DC. One user wanted to see this motor driving a fan, so I've shimmed up the uh, weird 10.5 millimeter diameter shaft, or was 11.5, to meet to match the half inch shaft. Let's see if this thing holds. Let's go straight for 120. Hey, that's not too bad. Wonder how much current it's drawing. Let's uh, get an ammeter out. <laughs> 30 amps. That's not going to last very long running at that power. <laughs> I think you can hear the motor slowing down uh, because the windings are heating up and the resistance is increasing. Okay, stay tuned for next video where we'll cut a slot down the flywheel and actually destroy this thing. Thanks for watching.